بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا ونبينا محمد بن عبد الله الصادق الأمين أحمدك ربي على كل قضائك وجميع قدرك حمد الرضا بحكمك لليقين بحكمتك وأصلي وأسلم على خير خلقك ونور عرشك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على أشرف الخلق وحبيب الحق المصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم Brothers and sisters in Islam, respective viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and ahlan wa sahlan and welcome to our program. First of all, we ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala grant all our beloved marhumin jannatul firdaus. Allahumma aghfir lahum wa rahamhum wa sakinum fil jannah. And we ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, may Allah make it easy for each and every Muslim. And may Allah grant the Muslim security and safety in each and every part of this world, inshallah. May Allah guide all mankind to hidayah, inshallah. Brothers and sisters in Islam, welcome back to Madrasatul Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah tabarak wa ta'ala fill the, the grave of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with nur and rahmah. And may Allah grant him al-wasilat wal-fadilat wal-darajat al-aliyat al-rafi'ah. Last program, we were looking for safety and security in dunya and akhirah. And we had mentioned the hadith of, uh, of uh, Sayyidina Abu Hurair radiallahu an, when Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, seven people will be under the shade of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And what a lovely shade which all the anbiya will get and salihin. And inshallah, you and I will get the shade of Allah in the day of judgment. And we did mention three of them on the last program that uh, the first person that Imam Adil and the second person the fair, the fair uh, ruler and the second one Shab Nasha Afi Ibadatillah a youth grow up under the obedience of Allah and worshiping of Allah and Warajulun Kalbuhu Mu'allakum Bil Masajid a man or the person his heart attached to the mosque. And we did explain that why Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi did put them on such order like that. First, maintain the, the justice so that we can live in, in fear and in justice. And then the second one, that youth, we guarantee the work and bring our children to Iman so that we guarantee the work on the future of deen. And we come to the mosque and then we maintain the ibadah so that we can guarantee akhirah. So, Imam Adil, a fair ruler of justice. And then the second one, we call it that youth, our children, must get hidayah. And the third person, masjid. We have to fill our masjid with the musalli. And we have to bring deen to the mosque. And we have to take deen from the mosque to our home, to our businesses, to our work. And for Muslim and non-Muslim. Now... We continue with the fourth group of people who will be under the shade of Allah in the day of Qiyamah. That وَرَجُلَانِ تَحَابَّا فِي اللَّهِ Two people, two persons love each other for the sake of Allah. Uh, that love, that love, uh, when, when we talk about why we love each other. So sometimes we love because we gain. We love because we feel secure. We love because... You are family, you love because you favor me or you grant me hadiyah. So there is a reason for love. But to find a person, just love him like that, with no reason and with no even prize for that, there's no return, that is called love of Allah. Sometimes when we meet a person and just love him. Why? I don't know. That person here is familiar to my heart. I just find him like that. But we ask him, why? why? He says, I don't know. This man, I like him. This is filla, for the reason, for the sake of Allah. Many people, they love Sahaba, but they never met them. It's lilla. Many people love Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we never met, saw him, but it's, it's for Allah. So when you find yourself love someone just like that, uh, it's, it's ajib. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala spoke about Sayyidina Musa Alaihi Salaam, وَأَلْقَيْتُ عَلَيْكَ مَحَبَّتِي 
and I have covered you with my love. So when Allah tabarak wa ta'ala love a person, he brought the heart of all the people to love him. Actually, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, he doesn't have any means as a, as a baby for wife of Pharaoh to admire him, and the king, Pharaoh. Nabi Musa alayhi salam was in a dark complexion, aqn al-anf, his nose like this, his curly hair. So if you're looking for the children, you won't go for that one. I know all the children are lovely, but how come Fir'aun, the one who killed the children, just love, love that boy, I don't know, and actually never love. He agree of the love of his wife. Brother and sister in Islam, it is the key of Allah, and it is the, the, the help of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. Rajulan, two persons, Love each other, lillah. Uh, no, no, no reason, right? Ijtama'a alayh. They gather, they meet each other just for the sake of Allah. Just for the sake of Allah. Why? We don't get anything from you. The reason you go to the mosque to listen to that person, or to see that person, or to meet that person, you love him for the sake of Allah. Not you, Sometimes you don't ask about his name. Right? And then, وَمَاتْ وَتَفَرَّقَ عَلَيْهِ And then they separate, they depart from each other also for the sake of Allah. They die, or they travel, they migrate, or sometimes you don't meet him. You meet people on Hajj for the sake of Allah. And you depart from the people of Hajj also for the sake of Allah. They call it وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا So unite yourself under the rope of Allah. So you will find that friendship will last long. The ulama said, once you lose your friend and no more friendship, one of you, he was willing to have something not for Allah. You want benefit or he commit a sin, so he doesn't deserve the opposite person. Brother and sister in Islam, it is punishment for us when we lose the friend. Maybe we commit something wrong, or maybe we, don't, we want him not for the sake of Allah. Brother and sister in Islam, many of us, we love our wife, and we have to love there's no other way she's going to fight. But what about if you just love because this lady, she's a mother of your children, or this lady assists you to, to have ismat, protection, or to be muhsan, chaste. So why don't you change the reason of love? And it doesn't cost you anything. Just something in your head for the sake of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. Friendship is the ibadah. Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, Nabi Ibrahim, alayhi salam, was khalilullah. Nabi Muhammad, alayhi salam, habibullah. So now we have to understand that muhabba for the sake of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Reverse your niyat, love one another for the sake of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And the benefit will come later on. Uh, you can't, you can't stay alone without friends. But I want, to, I want to keep a friend for the pleasure of Allah. When I see him, I remember Allah. When he sees me, he reminded me about Allah. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Sahaba to Nabi. Hundred thousand Sahaba were around Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa carried his deen with muhabba and love. And I don't want to give you a story and a seerah now. You must read about the ikhlas and sincerity of the friend, the companion of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Many friends, they were a means for hidayah for the others. That love, keep that ta'alluq, encourage you, support you, وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالصَّبْ To enjoy that advice, we run away to our friends. We run away to our friends to look for solution. And many friends became more earnest than our own f father and mother. Uh, loving that person for the sake of Allah is ibadah. Allah wants it like that. The other thing also, once you have a friend, good friends, it, you will implement example in a community. And then you will bring the community together, you bring society together, and you make a very lovely ibadah. Uh, if you don't have a friend, you deprive yourself from a greatest ibadah. It's called suhba. You will be resurrected with that person in the day of qiyamah. And also you won't find a helper in your life. Helper in akhirah and helper in the day of qiyamah. Uh, and, and Islam doesn't leave, let us go just follow our heart like that. He put condition. He put some rules how to keep the friends. Friends 
أن دا شريعة فالله المرء على دين خليله The person follow the religion and attitude of his friend فلينظر أحدكم من يخالص You must double check whom you keep a friend with the, 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 it's, it's very serious issue especially the women uh, friends is a mirror of the, the, the person oh, it's it matching you it's matching you so who you are and who's your friend uh, when, that's why we fight and say we're not allowed to uh, for, any Mus for any person to attack the sahaba of Rasulullah you can't allow the person to try to find faults on Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an or Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an or Aisha radiallahu an or any, any type of sahabi why? because al-mar'u ala dini khalili the person follow the religion of his friend so okay Abu Bakr Siddiq was a friend of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. you attack Abu Bakr Siddiq you already gave it to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa which is a major sin so brother and sister in Islam our friends are the copy of us, or oh, they will show an indication of our attitude. There's no friendship between a man and woman. No. You can't say she's my friend. It's not allowed. Why? It's haram. It's not mahram. How come you say this lady is my friend? What do you mean? Girlfriend or haram or wife or what? We know her and we deal with her as the right of the woman in Islam. She's my sister in Islam. That's all. So there's no friends, you go and give a secret to her, or she give, you come closer, you, you, there is a dawabat, there is a rules, there is certain rules in Islam, how to deal with the women, and how to, to leave that gap, which Allah Taala asks us to leave, between a man and women. We ask Allah Taala, may Allah save God, each and every Muslim, inshallah. Short break, we'll continue after the break. La ilaha illallah لا إله إلا الله. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Welcome back, brother and sister in Islam. And once again, we thank Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for giving me that opportunity to be with you today. We ask Allah Tabarak wa Taala may Allah grant us a good company in our life. And on your behalf, I'd like to thank my cameraman, my sound engineer, and all our friends in the studio. And uh, they, one, my, one, my friend, he told me that he agree that nowadays our friendship is not a genuine one because we don't base it on love or for the sake of Allah wa uh, When we talk about the friends, if you don't have a right friends, so go to the Sirat of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and pick up one Sahabi and keep him as a friend and learn about him. So it's not too late. We can get one Sahabi and I think all of us, we are friends of the Sahaba of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We admire them and we are trying to copy them inshallah. The other person will be under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of Qiyamah amongst the seven people which Allah wa ta'ala will grant them that shade and protection in the day of Qiyamah that uh, another amazing man amongst the Ummah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who is that person? Rajulun da'athum ra'atun A person being called by a woman Right, that a mansibin wa jamal, that lady got authority and got also a beauty and she's pretty. For what? For zina. Call him for zina. Brother and sister in Islam, before the break I was talking about the friendship between male and female and say you have to be under the rules of Islam. You can't be free like that because there's nothing it's called a uh, friendship between men and women without the rules of Islam, or actually, it's not mahram for you, it's not allowed to keep that one. Uh, and then that person said, Qala inni akhafullah. And then immediately he said to her, indeed I have fear on Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Zina, zina, now when we talk about this one here, yeah, zina is the third crime on Islam. Shirk, major sin, murder, Second one, zina is the third one. Shirk with Allah, ending the life of a person, and then zina, adultery, committing adultery. Islam came not to deprive you from the pleasure or the, from the desire. Just set it and adjust it and make sharia on it. 
Islam is the only religion allowed a person to marry first, second, third, fourth wife, more than one wife. So I don't believe that after four wives you will admire another one, otherwise you have a psychological problem. The other thing also, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala said, Zuyina lil nasi hubbu shahawati min al nisa The shaitan put some decoration and beautify the desire of women's, many women. But when you talk about halal, he said, Nisa ukum harthullakum. Your wives are enough for you. So we call him muhsan, the person who married, we call him muhsan, secure and chaste. I have my wife, and then Allah tabarak wa ta'ala give you full choice to choose and to get agreement before you marry because you will live with this woman. You have no affairs with other women, you're not allowed, is a major sin. The biggest problem, biggest problem when the man commits zina, but the worst problem that when the women want zina, very bad. That's why Sayyidatuna Tuna Hind, when she came to become a Muslim in front of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to the women that guarantee that you will never make shirk of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, you will never commit adultery. So these women who came to accept Islam said, oh, atazni al-hurra is that the free respected women can commit adultery, can sell her body, and gave it free to someone like that. So the Arabs women, even non-Muslim, she did not imagine that there is a chaste, a decent, respected woman can give her body to a man without the permission of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. In our case here, on this, this person number five, who will be under the shade of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, that person being called by the women, a man being called by the women, and then, that woman is not ordinary woman, that a mansib. She had authority on him, she's his manager, she got business, she got any, any attractive worldly things, wajamal, and beauty as well. So he got two, money and beauty. And then, that shahwa, that shahwa, that desire, the sexual desire, uh, it's, it's, it's natural, but Islam said, be careful, we give you the way to adjust it, to balance it in a decent way, in a respected way. Ambiya married, pious people married. It is not a problem at all. We don't deprive you from that pleasure, but we adjust it and put it according to Sharia. So Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala said that Zuyyina lil nas. In, in another surah, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala began with Azzaniyatu wa Zani. He began with the women first. That lady who commit adultery and the man who commit adultery so lash them and pell them, uh, uh, each and every one of them on, on certain rules. Brother and sister in Islam, it's bad for the women to, to ask. Why? Because she lost her, her izzat. That's why in Islam there is something that's called hajr. What is hajr? The man refused to sleep with the women as a punishment. Why the women? Why is not the women? Because Allah will punish the women. Why the women, if she said no to the husband, Allah will punish her, but the husband, when he wants to discipline, gnashes, that lady who disobedience, he deprives her from that night, because it's very, very painful for the women to feel that she's rejected. Why the women fight for, this, uh, for a husband when he married the second one? It's wound in the heart, it's a pain in the heart. She feels that maybe I'm not pretty, I'm not attractive enough, I'm not good. Why this lady coming? Why he run for that woman? What she got extra more than me? It's like that, because women feel. But what about if the woman drop her value, disgrace herself, and ask the man to sleep with her? And come on this man here, and alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah, that fitnatun uh, nisa, that, te that temptation of the women are not a common disease amongst the ummah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's not. That was for Bani Israel, fitna to Bani Israel and Nisa. The problem of the ummah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not women and uh, zina and all that. It's uh, money, fitna to ummah al mal is wealth. It's not the women. That was for Israelites. Uh, so it's not 
oh, is, is not common. The zina is not common amongst the Muslim community. Don't listen to those people who try to give you a bad thought about the Muslim ummah. They see the Muslim on the internet, on, on, uh, on the street, they say it is not a common disease. Wallahi al-Azim. And I'm on Islamic station, and I'm fully responsible for what I'm saying, that uh, is not a mass disease and sickness amongst the ummah. Our daughters are clean. Our children are our children. It's not for children of someone else. Many women become widow, divorce, unmarried women, love singles till the age of 60. She never ever touch a man. She never commit any sexuality. And she's proud of herself. And they say, we become virgin again after the husband died. And we did see in our life that many women and many girls are very chaste, decent, and not only one case or two, majority of the Muslim women are very pure and afifat, tahirat, qanitat, hafizatun li furujuhin. They are protecting their private part for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters in Islam, yes, some cases happen, but if the person said, inni akhafullah, saying to who? To that lady on the scene, no one catch them. It's very safe and secure because the women of wealth, the women of beauty, she asks, so she's, it's very safe for the person to commit adultery. But that person starts to turn to be a da'iya, a call of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. He did not say to himself, inni akhafullah, but he said to that woman, inni akhafullah, exactly like Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam. He said, no, 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 I can't do that. Why? Because I fear Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Wallahu khayrun wa abqa. I, plenty, plenty Muslim men face that situation and Allah safeguard them and never commit. They come out from it. It was very safe for them. It was guaranteed that they can do it. No one will catch them. But he said, no, inni akhafullah. Said to who? To that lady to give her da'wah and get hidayah after that. Brother and sister in Islam, it is shaitan. It's not because of desire. It is a shaitan. Alam ahad ilaykum ya bani adam and la ta'budu shaitan. And do not worship shaitan because shaitan come, they call it zina. What the meaning of zina? Decoration, beautification, makeup, a false makeup. Shaitan come to the person and decorate that situation. And he said that lady is pretty or she is not a pretty. And he said that you'll be safe. You'll enjoy your life and you like it, you what, what, what. After he committed, he regret and say, I don't want to see that woman again. It's like that. So, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala did warn me and you that we must not listen to the call of shaitan because you will regret. I don't want to talk about AIDS and sickness and family fight and violence and children, illegitimate children. I'm talking about the feeling for the person who committed that adultery and... Uh, he does he hate himself and that he, he think that he sold his body to the women. Brother and sister in Islam, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala knows that sexuality or that desire is very, very powerful in a human body, but he gave us the solution. That solution to give to make you strong to how to hold for the pleasure of Allah. All of us we have the desire. Desire of getting money, desire of have authority. You got so many desire. But the real hero, the one who said, Inni akhafullah, indeed I fear. Plenty of people had money and they can steal it, but he said, Inni akh. not only sexuality. Brother and sister in Islam, Rajulun da'at humra, a person will be under the shade of Allah wa in the day of Qiyamah. A lady called him, the lady of power, the lady of authority, a lady of beauty, and he said, Inni akhafullah. Enjoy this word and believe that all of us. We fear Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Short break, we'll continue after the break. La ilaha illa Allah La ilaha illa Allah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, brother and sister in Islam. And once again, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for granting me that opportunity to be with you today. And we ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, may Allah guide us to practice the deen of Allah and the sunnah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we thank Allah that he gave us that such a wonderful sharia to Islam. 
that give us safety and security in dunya and will put us under the shade of Allah in the day of Qiyamah. Today we are talking about the shade and protection of Allah in the day of Qiyamah for such person who faced that situation of zina and he said, Inni akhaf Allah, and Allah protected him and he decided to leave it for the pleasure of Allah. Tabarak wa ta'ala. He said, Inni akhaf Allah, I fear Allah. And believe me, brother and sister in Islam, thousands and millions of Muslims they had that opportunity and they, they said, decided, Inni akhaf Allah, khashi ar Rahman bil ghaib. He fear Allah in the unseen without seeing Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. The other thing also, that person said to that lady, inni akhaf Allah. Very difficult situation, there's no time to preach, but he did preach here and give a hidayah to, t to remind her about Allah, not only saving himself from the haram, he want to save that woman from the haram, which is also a greatest kalimat haqq, a greatest word on the truth. Inni akhaf Allah. Indeed, like Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam said it, to the wife of uh, the, the, the Aziz of Egypt. The other thing also, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, as He gave us that heavy desire, He gave us also a very powerful protection and, 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 and prevention. غَضُّ basar, Law you gaze. Hijab of the women, don't mix. Practice this ibadah, that أَنْ يَغُضُّ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ Tell the believer that they must lower their gaze. The greatest ibadah when you lower your gaze for the pleasure of Allah wa ta'ala because it is the eyes. It is the eyes and then shaitan as we said last time. The other thing also, beside the sickness and all that, that the, 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 the outcome of zina, there is a hadith of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said that, uh, that fear, fear Allah and do not commit zina because once you practice the zina adultery Allah tabarak wa ta'ala will punish that person for six punishment in dunya in his life before death and you know the the, the incident of Isra wal Mi'raj how horrible uh, that was punishment of the women who commit adultery or the men who commit adultery when Nabi Muhammad saw it on the fire of Jahannam the, the, six, the six punishment of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala will give it to the person who commit adultery that number one, Allah will snatch the baha from his face. Nurul iman, Allah will take the light and glooming of iman from his face. That will take that baha. You know the person, once he become a Muslim, come out from salah, from hajj, from ibadah, you find that uh, the sign of Iman there. The first punishment, you will find him lose that glooming or that nur of Allah wa ta'ala. The other thing also, Allah will grant him poverty, faqr. And you see how many people lost their salaries and businesses, lost their seat, authority, ministers and uh, presidents and kings lost their, their, their authority because of a woman, or the, the, the woman uh, came on his life. So, it will give him the uh, poverty and then short life will shorten his life because of sickness Allah take the barakah from his life and, and, and sh shorten his life he will die early because of sickness because no barakah on his life another thing also is called sakhatullah the anger of Allah la'na curse so imagine a person is cursed how are you going to get ease in his life Oh, I'm not talking about Akhirah. Akhirah is punishment. But talk about this dunya here. Become unfortunate person. No success. And see those who commit zina, how many calamity happen to them in their life and how many lose they have in their life. The other thing, su ul hisab. Bad questioning on the day of Qiyamah. Bad questioning on the day of Qiyamah. And then, adab ul nar, if he die now, he will receive the adab of Allah wa ta'ala. Brother and sister Islam, as we said many times, Muslims you got so many ways to prevent himself from zina, and we try to cut the asbab of zina, cut the means of zina, low your gaze. That can be for those who go to the website, the haram website on the internet, those who mixing men and women together, those who free his eyes to check the body of the women, those who free his organs to admire the women in haram, Ummat al-Islam, we have a wonderful sharia, ah. ask the man to not to look and the women cover your body. So the problem is our 
people now, they think they blame on the women. No, it's not the blame on the women only, the blame on you when you look. All, as I said, all of us, we have that desire, but who can say, inni akhafullah? You got zina, many type of zina, zina of the eyes, zina of well, you different type of zina, but uh, you got zina of the maharim, the mahram, the incest, zina of your neighbors, with your neighbors, zina of those you got authority on them, that is also is not allowed. Adultery with the, the wife of the muhajireen and musafireen, someone traveling, and you don't look after him, and not only zina, to admire zina, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala will question you about that. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُحِبُّونَ أَن تَشِيعَ الْفَاحِشَةُ فِي الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا You love, you admire that zina can be common and spread amongst the believer. That's why we said to the brother, be careful when you're sending the photo and picture through the, the, the phone or the computer. Do not spread the means of zina. Someone go to the website and you see the photo like this and doesn't try to delete and try to avoid it. He will be questioned about that in the day of Qiyamah and he do what? Adabun dunya and adabun akhirah. May Allah tabarak wa ta'ala make it easy for us. And I do believe and I full, uh, fully believe that Ummah al-Islam is not involved in that, not a common disease because thousands of young boys and uh, girls they were in such a situation like that and they said to themselves and the people inni akhafullah because of, 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 of the prevention of Allah and the promise of Allah وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا الْفَوَاحِشَ مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنْ Do not come closer to zina which is appear, appear zina, the show in zina and secret zina because not everyone who's doing zina openly. There are people doing zina secretly. So Allah said, avoid that situation, can put you in zina openly, or zina secretly, which you got, they call it affairs, secret affairs, people, only Allah tabarak wa ta'ala knows it. Wala taqrabu zina, do not come closer to any means, take you to zina. Another group of people, brother and sister in Islam, because I see my time is running fast, that rajulun tasaddaqa bi sadaqatin, a person, well be under the shade of Allah when he give a charity. Sadaqah, it could be, could be sadaqah, literally sadaqah, or zakat. Fa'akhfaha, he hide it. He didn't show it to the people. Right? Hatta la ta'lam shimalahu ma tunfiqu yameenu. His left hand doesn't know what is his right hand give. It means he was so, uh, so uh, care, careful uh, for, 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 uh, to be known to be known. So what is sadaqah? Sadaqah comes from sidq, the truth. Sadaqah is the truth. A person, person, want to give zakat. And it's called the right of Allah, haqq of Allah. Wa fi amwalihim haqqun ma'loom. That is for zakat. And we got another ayah, say, wa fi amwalihim haqqun lissail wal mahroom. It's just a sadaqah, charity. We got two type of, oh, zakat we know. Zakat you can give it openly if it will help, because many people reach, they don't want to show zakat in front of their children. The children think that my daddy never pays zakat this year. He say, no, I paid. You must inform your children that you pay zakat so that you create the example in front of your children. And also sometimes we, we show it to the society because sometimes society got, society got jealous. How come this man is rich but you never see him help? Or he never build a masjid like that? So there are some opportunity to, to show if it's going to help and it's going to solve the problem in the mind of the people. And then we got sadaqah, which is not zakat, it's called sadaqah, the charity, with the two type of sadaqah. Sadaqah to dhikr and sadaqah to shukr. Sadaqah to dhikr when you have a calamity. Take out sadaqah. And we need to do it secretly, that one. And sadaqah to shukr when you, you want to be grateful to Allah. When Allah give you some ni'mat, you have to give sadaqat, uh, they call it, tasaddaqa yawma ursika li yawmi habsik. Give charity on the day of your wedding, on behalf of the day of your jail, imprisonment. It means prosperity time will help you in difficult times. So brother, sister Islam, so zakat you can show for reason. And also sometimes you hide it for reason. Allah knows. And sadaqah, 
you do it also for reason. Uh, but obviously we have to hide it if there is no reason. And Allah will show it later on, inshallah. The people will, will talk about you as Sayyidina Zayn al Abidin, the son of Al Hasr radiallahu an. He used to hide his charity and his help and service to the people. In the time of his janazah, when they made ghusl to him, they saw the mark on his shoulder when he carried the food to the needy and the poor people. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when Sahabi came to him, Rasulullah, I, I committed a sin. What should I do? He said, Tasaddaq, give sadaqa, charity, as sirru bi sir, wal alanu bil alan. Secret sin with secret sadaqa. Openly sin with openly sadaqa, pay from the same medicine. Pay from the same medicine. And uh, Allah wa ta'ala did make it easy for the Ummah of Islam to repent through the sadaqa, and it's called shifa, remedy, cure, medication for the pleasure of Allah wa ta'ala. Sadaqa is the secret between you and Allah wa ta'ala. Short break, we'll continue after the break, inshallah. La ilaha illa Allah. لا إله إلا الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back brother and sister in Islam and شكرا جزيلا that you tuning to our channel and we ask Allah تبارك وتعالى may Allah accept your sadaqat may Allah تبارك وتعالى make it easy for us to give something for the sake of Allah uh, before the break I was talking about the secret sadaqah and openly sadaqah but I forgot to tell you that sadaqah is not only that money and food we give Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam did make it easy for everyone to 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 give sadaqa and to receive sadaqa and charity. Al kalima tu tayyiba tu sadaqa. The good words you give it to the people is sadaqa. Tabassumuka fi wajhi akhika sadaqa. To smile on the face of your Muslim brothers is is a charity, is a sadaqa. So food you give it to your children, sadaqa, is to stay away from haram, is sadaqa. You got so many ways to, 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 to give and to pay the charity without cash and without uh, 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 physical thing there. To speak good and to forgive others is sadaqa. Better than a charity, you harm person when you give it to them. Sadaqa jariya after death. It's, uh, it's ongoing charity, it, reward will come to you in the grave. And uh, Allah wa ta'ala was warning me and you from showing favor to those who make sadaqah. Do not cancel your, your charity, the reward of your charity by favoring the person and harming him after you give him the sadaqah. Nabi Muhammad sallallahu said, ma naqasa malum min sadaqa, that you will never decrease your money if you pay from it. And the, uh, the ibadah said that, uh, the, the, the ulama said, when you spend on hajj, each and every uh, spending, it will be counted as a charity for you. And as sadaqa tutfu'u ghadab al rabb the charity switch off the anger of Allah wa ta'ala and sadaqah will remove the guilt and the sin and guna and, and, and the sin. Aisha radiallahu anha, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam slaughtered a, a sheep and he asked Aisha, what is remaining there? She said, all of it, all of it uh, uh, gone uh, except a shoulder. Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, no, 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 don't say like that. Say all of it remain except the shoulder which you, me and you are going to eat it. It means anything you deposit it to Allah, it will remain for you till the day of Qiyamah. Brother and sister in Islam, food is a good sadaqah, knowledge is a good sadaqah. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah is the greatest sadaqah you give it to the people. You, great, you, you give the people hidayah, teaching Islam and sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our effort as a sadaqah inshallah. When we spend on our children, when we just try to show the beauty of Islam to the ummah, inshallah will be counted as a sadaqah to jariyah for all of us inshallah. The last person will be under the shade of Allah in the day of qiyamah. Rajulun dhakar Allah. A person will remember Allah. Khaliya, lonely, separately, alone, and then fafadat aina, then his eyes flowing tears. 
a person like me and you remember Allah tabarak wa ta'ala dhakar Allah so what is the meaning of dhakar Allah remember something about Allah or about himself with Allah tabarak wa ta'ala maybe he remember his sin we commit a sin and we cry because of that aynun bakat min khashyatillah when you read the ayat about jahannam and the punishment of Allah and you remember your sin and what you have done before you find the tears falling oh dhakara that he remembered the forgiveness of Allah and he feel happy the tears of joyness when we give the people glad tidings they cry and say alhamdulillah that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala does not make us qanat uh, uh, qanat it means lose hope on Allah tabarak wa ta'ala oh, oh the tears because you counting the ni'mat of Allah ni'mat of Allah it means you got the news that you're going for hajj and you see this lady crying would that man cry or you got a new baby they, they call it the cry of joyness cry of farah and then maybe you cry because Allah tabarak wa ta'ala favor you while you are committing a sin that is also shows the generosity of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala oh Allah, remember Allah that you will meet him and you will see Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and you will talk to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala oh maybe you see the truth that monks and priests of the Christian when they accepted Islam they cry a lot because he was admiring that road of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala or maybe people mention the name of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala in front of them وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ that once Allah's name mentioned in front of them they start to shiver to start to shake and we have in the history of Islam about those who got tears that those who repent and remember the sin they call them al-bakka'oon those who cry cry because they got something lash their back and, uh, and, and, and let them feel guilty uh, crying is a ni'mat from Allah tabarak wa ta'ala if it's from Allah uh, wa the one who causes you to laugh causes you to cry and to cry for the sake of Allah and halal crying Abu Sufyan in one battle he stopped the women from crying and the men from crying for their, their beloved one you see once you hold the crying you know how to revenge so in Islam allow the person to cry to be very merciful when even when you are revenge the other thing also the tears come from your eyes is a mercy of Allah Nabi Muhammad وسلم, who the Sahaba did see the tears coming from the eyes of Rasulullah and Allah said وَيْلٌ لِلْقَاسِيَةُ قُلُوبُهُمْ مِنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ woe to the people who don't have tears in their eyes uh, crying you will never be punished in the day of Qiyamah even if you cry one drop as a mosquito bite you know the small drop like this بُكَاءُ uh, muznibin, the tears of the sinners is tawbah is ibadah and tawbah when they cry and weeping it will be tawbah for them uh, sickness the, the tears of the sickness begging Allah and asking Allah to cure you it's also munajat and ibadah all the creation of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala they cry فَمَا بَكَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّمَوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضِ so Allah tabarak wa ta'ala did mention that uh, there are tears coming or crying weeping from the sky and, and earth and uh, you know the trunk the palm trunk was crying for Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the camel was crying in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam why do we cry? we try to stimulate the person to feel sorry for us so when we cry after committing sin we try to draw the mercy of Allah when he look at us while we are crying like that the crying also is sympathy tears with tears it helps a lot it relieves the person especially on a funeral Nabi Muhammad Sallam allowed the people to cry but not to scream or not to say something against the deen of Allah is sharing the pain is called sharing the pain the other thing also crying is a sign of Iman when you cry in a legal way in a halal way when the people heard the call of Allah and they heard the, the kalam of Allah they fail on a prostrating sajda and they're crying so you got a body an emotion a feeling another thing also Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did say the tears is a medication for harshness and rudeness in the heart that cruelty we have in the heart he uh, we got here so many incident 
that Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did cry. He cried uh, when he heard the ending of Surah Al Imran till he wet the the mat, the the musalla. He cried when he visited the grave of his mother, and he cried when he heard the adab of Allah will come to some Muslims. Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam cried. He cried when he lost his beloved one, uh, Ibrahim Alaihissalam son. Khadija radiallahu anha, when, he, when she passed away, Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam cried and he called that year the year of sorrow. Uh, he, he cried when he see some thought of punishment in the journey of Isra al Mi'raj. He did cry because he, he cried when he saw the funeral of one Jew passing and he said, No, this man, he escaped from my hand, he's going to the fire of Jahannam. Uh, he cried when he see his uncle Hamza uh, being uh, tortured after he, he's been uh, killed. He cried because he could not stand up for his daughter Fatima radiallahu anha when she came to visit him while he was in sick. Uh, he cried on the time of death of Zayd bin Haritha and Sayyiduna Ja'far, Sayyiduna Abdullah bin Rawaha and Sayyiduna Uthman bin Mad'oon. He, he, he cried because he, he felt that he was going to miss this Sahaba. Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, he cried when he sees Sayyiduna Sa'ad bin Ubadah in his sickness. He, he cries a lot. He, he saw that, that strong Sahabi suffering like this, he, he cries. But he cries out of mercy, not out of objection of, the, of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. He cries when he heard Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud reading Quran and he, 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 he saw the tears of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his eyes. That is called the halal, uh, halal crying. But what about someone cries because he did not get dunya? He cries because he's jealous. He cries because he, he missed the haram. He cries, oh, he caused the yatim to cry. He caused the orphan to cry, shaking the arsh of Allah. Oh, what about those who make the other cry? Of what? Because of his oppression, because of his injustice. What about those who make the mother cry? Why? Because he abuses the mother, make the children cry. What about those who oppress the people and cause the people cry because he's oppressing them? He cry because his job is to cry, to gain money and, uh, and to beg. He cry because of showing off piety. He cry because he can't make sabr. He cry because he's envy someone who he miss some ni'ma. He cry because he got hypocrisy. He brought the tears just to cheat and deceive the people. We ask Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, Oh Allah, give us a sincere tears in our eyes for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unfortunately, my time is up. We've got so many things to say, but inshallah next time we'll say it. ربنا إننا سمعنا مناديا ينادي للإيمان أنا منو بربكم فأمنا ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار شكرا جزيلا تلوسين إن شاء الله next time السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ربنا رب القلوب وهو علام الغيوب في الشروط وفي الغروب ربنا رب القلوب وهو علام الغيوب في الشروط وفي الغروب نوره يهدي العصا ربنا